All right, we're back on the overdose. Andrea, I would wager that you've probably got a nice little introduction for our uh, our guest coming up here. You Mary, would win. Mary Marshall from the Paranormal MD. Would you like to uh, <clears throat> let everybody know some of her uh, some of her very impressive credentials here? Mary Marshall is the founder and director of the Paranormal MD, a paranormal investigation group in northwestern Illinois. She helped pioneer one of the first higher education paranormal studies program in the U.S. at Harper College in Illinois, where she teaches paranormal studies classes. She uses her unique knowledge of the connection between science, technology, metaphysics, and spirituality, as well as the 25 plus years of paranormal research to help create better investigators and researchers. She frequently lectures at public events and conferences, has hosted her own paranormal themed talk show, and is currently writing two books. Ready? I think Let's so. Let's bring her on. Mary Marshall, are you there? I am here, and I'm laughing because that was one of the nicest, most pleasant introductions. <laughs> I love the music. Thank you. Yeah, that's our that's our little signature touch here. Um, I like, like to make people feel welcome. Um, welcome. Mary joining us from Skype, sounding very nice, like she's almost in studio with us here. That's yeah, beautiful. Um, so, uh, how, are, how are you doing? How is everything? Hi. I'm doing fine, and yes, yeah, stop with me because I just have all these images. I have like car shows, and over here, this product. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my radio voice, and the, and the shiny new chrome on this. And yeah, yeah, Andrea likes to test out her radio voice on the on the intros. Yeah, um, I, it was awesome. Thank, well, thank you very you. much. So, uh, you guys are on a hiatus from doing investigations right now, huh? No. Um, well, yes and no. Okay. Only from <laughs> we. Let's put it this way. I have it there as I, I don't do a lot of the home or private investigations anymore. With that being said, inevitably, we land up doing a couple of them a year anyway because somebody that on the team that somebody knows or, you know, one of those, somebody you know. And sure. Okay. Yeah. Somebody needs then, needs something done and uh, and and. Might as well, might as well do it for him. Um, before you know, before we get into all this, I totally forgot. We wanted to ask you, since you have a uh, background in science, and I and uh, I think you're pretty strong on physics and stuff, right? Um, we <laughs> wanted, we wanted to ask you. We were just talking about this new uh, experiment that sort of, uh, what what is it called, Andrea? The uh, the double slit experiment, but it's a new take on it. Um, yeah, right. I don't, I don't know if you were listening to us. Do you want to kind of? The the short version is that they recreated the double slit experiment but instead of using photons they used whole helium atoms uh, well, what happened uh they measured as both waves and particles and uh some evidence suggested that the part or the hmm, atoms decided what they were in the how do you fr how do we phrase it hold on let me find it in the article well it's it's like it's yeah it's basically <clears throat> Um, is this the matter of oh, go ahead. whether determining if it's a wave or, or a particle pun when they measured it? Thing? Yeah. Uh, yes, they're saying yes. a future event, as in the method of detection, causes it to decide its past. Yeah, that starts getting into entanglement. Uh, okay, so dealing with, yeah, this with is what quantum like, entanglement is? Yeah, because the, what they were finding... You know, again, upon looking upon, at it, it's kind of like Schrodinger's cat, you uh, know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, with the whole idea of it's really determined upon when you're looking at it. So upon the measurement, uh, when you're not looking at it, they automatically will split off and you'll just see n this nice, you know, uh, you know, what they're doing. And as soon as, you, you know, if they start measuring it, it's like it either just determines it's going to be a wave or it's going to be, you know, and it started the way it's just, uh, it'll change. And as far as the present and the future making the past. Now, I cannot remember the specific people or for that matter where the experiment took place um, off the top of my head. But they did another one where they did, this me did measurements like this. And it involved trying to determine time because time is really uh, a perspective. Yeah, well, that's kind of what's indicated by this new experiment is like, and that's what just blew my mind right off the top. I'm like, you know, what? Yeah, exactly. What is time now? If this is, if this is, if we accept this as reality, and like they're saying, like they said in this article, they did mention Schrodinger's cat, and um, 
you know, they're saying like, let's see, what is it? It says, uh, with uh, the in the world of very small, strange theories like this, uh, this seems to be the only way to explain what we see. Um, is that yeah, time is is somehow malleable. It, and it, it it appears to be so. And dimensionally, I mean, that's that's part of the equation. That's part of you know what uh, Einstein was looking at. You know, and okay. so when you're dealing with the present and the future can actually influence the past, which makes no sense to us because we move forward in a linear motion, so to say. That's how we see things or experience things. Um, but when you're dealing with entanglement, when one thing, thing happens one place, it happens equally at the same time elsewhere. And that can be by particles, by waves, uh, distance, it, you know, it, so... One thing in here, if you really want to blow your mind, is if you think about it this way, is that we actually, part of our makeup, our physical DNA, genetic makeup as humans, we share a significant amount uh, percentage-wise with the same stuff that um, the stars, the universe is made up of. Sure, right. Yeah. So yeah. we're all interconnected. So when you start... Entanglement predicts that if you do one, like I said, if you, something changes here, it automatically changes there. We're never going to notice that change. It's happening instantaneously. So when you start looking at some like your movies, let's try to think you think of it in that way. Some of your you know older movies where they've done this thing of time when they're dealing with it. Um, the perspective on that is is that only the person in the midst of it knows that there's a difference. You know what I'm talking about, these movies, right? right. So like if you go back in time and nobody else knows anything's ch- and then they go back to back to the future. That's a good example. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then he goes back and the ho- everybody in his family's different. Right, right, right. But he's the only one who notices it. Yes. Um essentially um what the prediction is is that we that in the reality Michael J. Fox wouldn't have noticed it being different either. Right. Because okay. that's the future he would have come from to begin with. Yeah. Right. It is simultaneously hmm. right. happening. Um, another way, I, I, this is how I, what I use to explain it. If you think of it, time and dimension, like a racetrack. You have the starting gates, and you have the horses at the gate. Okay. Each, g- the gates represent we'll just say the beginning of everything, the beginning of time, beginning of everything. Each lane represents a dimension and a year. So you have year one occurring at the same exact time, year 2013, and the year 5030 is happening. Okay. So you're at this gate. The gates all open at the same time, and the horses take off. Now, each one of those lanes is a designated dimension and year and as you're going as the horses are running the race often they don't more times than not they don't stay in those lanes sometimes they bounce in and out they come back in their own lane and they go back this is some of the explanation i will use for paranormal activity okay interesting because Um, there is that crossover and you're kind of popping in and out uh a lot of the activity that occurs, whether it be from ghost or uh, something is, you know, Bigfoot. Um, we have well, often I, we have often discussed that, uh, you know, Bigfoot is one of those really compelling ones that there's so many uh, anecdotal, um, there's so much anecdotal evidence and there's so many people who have seen uh, or say they've seen and, and blah, blah, blah for thousands of years in different cultures, yet there's just no anything to latch onto and grab onto. We've talked so many times about, you know, it seems like it's some sort of interdimensional, you know, right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's been our feeling on that too. Um, that's right. a, and you know that we wouldn't, you know, it's because people are like, well, why aren't there bones? Why aren't there, you know? Yeah. Well, this would explain a lot. It's kind of a root at a lot of the paranormal activity is just the idea of multiverse, uh, whether you know whether you want to look at it as string theory, but just multiple dimensions. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Verse. Now, so but- one of the, some of the some of the most fascinating paranormal cases to me 
are ones that uh, seem to be an event that just replays, you know, uh, from another time. And for whatever reason, when the conditions are correct, you can witness this ghost ship or this you know this or thing that'll always show up the girl falling, the girl the falling yeah the girl falling yeah. down the stairs at that place in wisconsin and then she would you know always appear in the same mm-hmm. place now that to me seems to be like the the easiest kind of way you could take okay you know because pe- people will get into paranormal and go oh, well i, I want to talk to my dead grandma and and blah 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 but to me what you, what what you're talking about sounds a lot like this kind of thing where it's like an event can sort of imprint itself in some sort of electromagnetic uh, field of some kind, you know, and somehow be recorded and then replayed when there's a shift or when there, whatever, like you're saying, there's uh, uh, interdimensional, you know, uh, the horse, the horse running into the other lane, mm-hmm. and here you see this this event replaying. Right. You know, is that is that it, kind of just a layman's way of 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 sort of explaining the paranormal side of what you're talking about? Yeah, and and just to kind of clarify too, going, I know it sounds like a, a strange thing to use, but that using the horse race again and and the racetrack, is that if you notice all of the gates, all of the, the it it started at the same time, so there isn't a linear process. They're they're running. If you could visualize it, and that's how I guess the way to do it, it's visualize each year, each dimension running alongside of each other. Right. So when you're dealing with something like quantum entanglement, where everything is a wave and a particle, it is both, um, we would not consciously be able to identify one thing affecting another one year one event of affecting in another because it would automatically happen and so it would it change every event at the same time so if yeah, something okay. we do in the present in the future uh changes something in 1950 you know i mean i'm really stretching here to just for the sake of making a point <laughs> um we wouldn't be aware of it because it is that that um circle that brings us back to well, if we didn't do that in the first place, right? Right. We, it it no, was always French. the future that had been created in 1950, whether it was the first 1950 or the second 1950. Right. right. It was always the future that created it anyway. Yeah. That. So uh, it, it. I know. It is. It is enough when you get into these types of topics that you could just feel like uh, your head could just spin. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and it is, and I think. The more you learn, the more the more you just open up new doors and new questions to marvel Absolutely. at. You know, um, it is a uh, it is one of the only things that can make me wish I went to college. Um, that is <laughs> one of the only things that can do it. Um, you know what? I always say, tell everybody, I'm like, you know, when they leave the class, and it's like, well, I hope when you leave here that some of the questions um, that you came in with, that you have answers for some of the questions that you came in with, but I've really done my job. If you leave here with more questions than you came in with. Yeah. And that's the point is just that a never ending process of thinking of, uh, you know, looking at things differently and connecting and relating and so on and so forth. Okay. That's a lot of what we do in the paranormal field. It isn't, a science in onto itself and that's what kind of drove me down the path of looking at things um that's interesting to hear to it. that's interesting to hear you say that uh sorry to cut you off but we normally hear that from like psychics who have no real evidence to back up at anything that they say they can do and they go well it's not a science it's this and that so that's funny just that you look at it the same way um when you have well, you, obviously yeah. such a sophisticated scientific education, you know, right? Um, I, well, I, I, I don't have. I mean, as far as where I'm coming, well, from you're you're that, impressing us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: is that if you're looking at, um, you know, in scientific method, the whole point of that is to be able to keep repeating it and try to see what that un- outcome is. You can't do that with paranormal activity. Oddly, though. Psychic That's and a good point, yeah. medium phenomena is more one of the most studied out of probably just about any paranormal type thing I can think of right now. And the reason for that is is because you can take a medium or a psychic medium, s- stick them in a lab, and repeat the process over and over <sighs> and over. And thus, oh, you are... Yeah. 
now doing one of the important things of what the scientific method um, is about. You can't do that because every other, most of everything else is so random. You, you you know you can't repeat it. And so that's why you, we have to kind of steer away from saying, oh, it's scientific. Um, how I describe it is like if I'm doing uh, an investigation with keeping the scientific method, basis for the scientific method in mind, blah, 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 blah. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. And creating as many controls as possible. Sure, sure. Um, that is a really good point. Uh, and, I, and 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 one that I probably should have thought of, but yeah, that's a really yeah, that's a really good point about uh, just not really being able to uh, repeat anything in the paranormal process. Yeah. yeah. Um, what uh, what is your favorite stuff to to get into as far as investigating and and research goes with with what you do? Are you someone who believes in in intelligent? Uh, spirits of any kind or or do you just kind of study these things like we we're talking about before as though they're probably some um in like some dimensional blip or whatever you know uh wh- where do you stand on that like are you somebody that that subscribes to any of this contacting dead relatives or any of that kind of stuff yes okay. um i mean that was a couple different kind of things in there what my you know it's interesting because i have very equal parts uh, in my as far as how my thinking goes, I mean, there's this very more logical and I'll, you know, for way to say it, more scientific way to look at things, but equally as so, um, as far as on the spiritual side of things, because you know some of the things that I ha- I do teach are things that make no sense, at least not <laughs> in a logical scientific way okay so you're because you're going to turn around and you're talking about all these these you know certain aspects of things theoretical or not and that are in science sure right and then right. You turn around and say well but if you sage and 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 you know somebody could look at you and go what right so you kind of have to dispense of like the rigid parameters of how we define reality typically i guess yeah with through the scientific yeah. process and you and you kind of yeah, you go down a much different road. Yeah. <laughs> because I have to tell, you know, and I'll tell them, I have to tell you this. And this is from doc observation and correlation and documentation. Those are my, like, three key things that I always, like, throw out there. And if you're using that and you have case upon case that this type of activity was going on, but when somebody went through and did a house cleansing and they used sage and they, you know... I've personally seen it work myself, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Um, and there is there is not a logical explanation for it. There is not a scientific. However, there is a pattern, and that is all that we can do is report what we are experiencing... Um, or what the results are of something, and because that what you're left with, that's 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 what it is, and so it doesn't always make sense, and so it's a very, I mean, really, it's a very confusing, all-encompassing <laughs> field um, to be in because yeah, there's so many different angles that to come from and to look at, and not always having <sighs> a really good explanation for it. You know, you were talking about intelligent, and it's like, well, absolutely, you have to go in, and I, if I go into a location, I'm approaching it as if there is an entity there, because generally there has, you're there for a reason. Either it's a house, a family situation where you've been told, or it's a known, uh, you know, paid public place that you can go investigate at, okay, where yeah. claims and activity have taken place. And... You know, you go you go into go in there, and you're talking to appear seemingly nobody, but you have to be personable, you have to be conversational, um, and you it, conduct yourself accordingly. With this being said, that the most blatant thing could happen in front of me, and I will. Immediately, like, be questioning it like crazy. 
Well, you know, I know I just saw a full-bodied apparition, but let's think of all the ways. <laughs> Maybe the light I, was weird. But yeah, this yeah. Uh, there is a co- I, there's a coat I, rack by the window Advil, that could cast yeah. a shadow. Maybe an Advil I took. I mean, you know, I don't know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a vent turned on and a door closed, and it changed the way the light was reflecting. Um, yeah, I do the same thing. No, that yeah, that is funny. That that uh, that's just a constant battle in your mind when you're when you're dealing with the paranormal stuff of like. Yeah, you want to detach and 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 get away from trying to explain things through your normal methods, but then you know you really can't help it. You got to try to eliminate the obvious stuff, I guess. Um, it, I, it is interesting to me though that people a lot of times say, "Well, you know, the investigator is the best tool you have," and I'm like, my opinion is, well, yeah, but the the it's only as good as its operator. Okay. And what yeah. I <laughs> what I mean by that is. We, and there's all these shows, which is awesome because you can direct people to them now on TV. Um, you know, like Brain Games, you know, there's a show uh, like that, and so on and so forth. Yeah, sure. We, well, I, so we don't fallible. see them, but yeah. Go ahead, sorry. We're so fallible so that we cannot always make, we can't believe our, our, ourselves most of the time. So this is why we do use things like video and audio and other tools to try to gr- document and graph outside of our own human experience because quite honestly we can't trust ourselves. Yet every single one of us are are you know what's what's the from the Missouri the show me state want to experience it ourselves in order to believe it. Yet we're probably the last thing we should believe. Does it? You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, very. Because yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. Yeah, our, um, our brains lie to us. Right. Um, I want to ask you too. So, you know, as far as tools for investigating go, do you use any? Uh, and do you? And do you? Uh, I, I what do I want to say? The ghost box and what was the other thing? Uh, what's I'm, it? I'm not sure. Yeah, whatever. You know. So you are you familiar with the ghost box? Or the yes. uh, spirit box, or whatever. I think of a bunch of names for it. Do you think there's any legitimacy to uh, to using that tool? Again, depending upon how it is used, um, I will. I'm all about anything, whether it be provable, as, or, or could be used as proof per se, mm-hmm. um, or not. If it if it increases communication, because the more communication we have the more we know and the more we know the better we all can you know further this along yeah right with the spirit box the one thing there's all kinds of mistakes i see being made people refer to uh well we got this evp yeah it's not though huh no it's not an evp (laughs) right um Um, it's and i was just gonna for for anybody who doesn't know the the spirit box is basically like an ultra high frequency scanner that's going to sweep across a, a, a lot of frequencies uh it's a really, broken radio really quickly right <laughs> exactly yeah yeah and that is oftentimes what kind of uh i don't know it kind of holds me back from from really feeling like it can have a lot of legitimacy because i feel like it's just so easy to to intercept so there's so many radio waves flying around yeah. you know what i mean and it's just i feel like it would be really easy to uh to get a lot of terrestrial you know well and they come from everything i mean you can hear well, the right. radio waves of jupiter on am radio if you want to um here's some of the safeties i think that you can put in place because with that being said i would say that i have had successful um what i would call <laughs> spirit box sessions um, Where did that, you feel like you were interacting really and, though? Yeah. Okay. And here's why. Be- but you can't just go in, and this is the first mistake people make. They turn this thing on. It's scanning. It's basically think. And again, I, it's a radio, with an old dial radio, but it's broken. It just keeps spinning. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's a you know good way. So it's constantly changing at an extremely fast rate. You ha- they go in, they'll turn it on, and they'll be like, oh, you know, so is there anybody here with us? And then, you know, you hear, you know, blah, 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 Bob, you know, and then uh, something else. And it's like, oh, so that's your name? And then, you know, and they'll be asking questions right away. Statistically, I, I, and I have yet to do this, and I keep saying I'm going to do this. I want to get hold of a statistician, somebody with math. I want to find out if you asked a question of... um. Do you know, and and somebody 
we had a case like this and somebody was a, a smoker. And so they smoked cigarettes and the person was deceased were in their house. And the thing, I think, came out with the word smoke. Okay. And everyone's like, oh, Ooh, you know, like yeah. this is a big deal. <laughs> and I thought, if you ask that question, let's say I asked the question and, and I said, uh, you know, so are you a smoker? How many words would we associate and deem appropriate answer? As a smoke, response to that. Yeah. yeah. Cigarette, yeah. cancer, breath. You know, sure, mom. sure. Oh, your mom smoked? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just goes on and on. The Long so, Island psychic technique. Yeah. Well, and um, also, or so, many of those, Sorry. <laughs> so many of those uh, recordings are so uh, garbled and they're open to so much interpretation. All you need is a sound that sounds like one of those words. Right, it's yeah. It's easier if you record it. It's easier to listen to in now, a recording than when you're listening in person because it's a little harder for whatever reason for our ears to discern between the the uh, white noise and what's being said mm -hmm. often. But it's often clearer for anybody listening, by the way, if you listen back to it on an uh, audio recorder. Um, here's my suggestion. Do I think, though, that it it was... D is legitimate in that true communication happens? I do. And okay. here's why. If you go into it and you turn the thing on, you ask validation questions. Questions that you know the answers to. And that cannot be answered by a ham radio or any other goofy thing, which by the way, you can determine that by frequencies if you have the right equipment to to. to push out any of those things being at cause. So you're staying very uh, clear to specific frequencies um, that any the radio might come across. Okay. But yeah. validating, so we're, three of us are sitting in a room and I say, you know, uh, so what color shirt am I wearing? What street are, is this house on? What room am I sitting in? You know, it's very specific that have only one answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you, that you, only you in that room know the answer to. Right. Now, if you get a few of those answers in a row, now you might be talking to somebody. Now, we've had, yeah, we've had a couple people on the show that say, hey, there are certain times where, yeah, you know you get four or five things in a row and, and you go, hey, this is really... This is really happening, you know, yeah. and, and other investigators have told us sometimes it even feels a little silly, like you'll just be sitting there talking to no one for, you know, but then when it happens, I guess, you know, uh, all of a lot of people have been very convinced and uh, including including you, I guess. What what is the situation that, that you were in where you felt like you were really interacting with uh, someone through the spirit box? Um, it was a location that we were investigating for three years um, and in some of the final investigations there, the last couple. Are we in a of, uh, are we in a house or we're in it was a it was a house, but it was not a, a family. It was a museum. Okay, cool. And um, so we're you know we're in there, and again the validation questions were being answered. Then we got into just let's ask you questions about who we already were pretty sure from previous EVPs and so forth that were there. Um, and, um, the name of the family name that was in this house, uh, for, for almost 60 or over 60 years, uh, was Wolf. During this thing, it was repeating this, it repeated it six times. Wow. But, oh. Um, and then I would ask, you know, you ask things, okay, um, you know, I am trying to think of the questions back to it now, but whatever I can't, I am sorry, I can't think of them, but whatever a lot of the questions were, we were getting some pretty good answers. Here's where it gets interesting though. On the back, on the f back end of this, when you're all done, so you've done your validation questions, you've gotten three, four, at least solid answers that there's just no way and coincidence, nah, not so much at that point, you know? Right, yeah, um, yeah. And you move into a line of questioning. When you get more than one word, but let's say even if you're getting three words, and I, I'll say sentence, but it could be as little as three words. 
or long words. It depends on how many syllables are in each. And the thing comes back and says, um, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, I, my family name is Wolf. We'll just go with that again. Okay. You know, yeah. family name, you know, family name Wolf. Right. Now, in order for you to hear that, and that's the value of also recording it, you can start checking the frequency. One is, you know, one, you can check for things, other things too, are when you're listening to EVPs, is it in human voice range and so forth and like that. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But also, uh, if the channels are changing too quickly, if you can do it, now most people can't, and I can't, you know, for this, you know, the FBI voice uh, analysis equipment, but you can basically doing it again a little bit by frequency and by ear um if it's all in the same voice that's impossible the right channels are changing too quickly yeah i see what yeah. you're saying yeah yeah because if it was if it was some radio wave interference or something it would be you would made get, up, yeah you would be able to see the interference okay yeah yeah you would be able to see that on with certain readings that you should be taking at the same time um and you can't use a standard like EMF because that's just going to bulk everything in the same thing. you got to look at extremely low frequencies, very low frequencies and stuff and see where things are coming from. But furthermore, when you start getting into um, wave, you know, waves in particular as far as bands and things are coming from. But if it's all in the same voice, it's, imp- it's impossible. That thing has changed channels uh, a, a dozen times by the time that third word is ending. Yet you're getting a voice that says "family name Wolf." Yeah, very interesting. So it's a combination, you know. You putting all of those things together, um, that's when you start getting something. It's just that when you turn the thing on and just start asking questions and talking and whatever it says, you're like, oh, and you make up like what it might mean. Yeah, right, right. That's where I have an issue with people saying, oh, I'm communicating all the time. Yeah, you know. Okay, right, yeah. Uh, and I, I would I would agree with that. It's I see what you're saying. It's the kind of thing you have to take a, a broad look at the uh, at the data and be realistic about it and... Um, but then, yeah, when it, when you are really having some success, don't I guess don't doubt it. You know, it's 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 yeah, it's, exactly, it's working because um, I they there is absolutely every indication that this should be a means for them to communicate with us. Um, it, one way to do now, it. Now, do you feel like uh, when people are doing this, that so, so someone lives a life, they die and pass on, and then do you feel that? that the soul or or whatever you might call it of that person is then coming back to interact or you know because a lot of people will say no we don't interact with um with dead people we interact with other types of spirits that were never alive you know and there's all different types and depending on what your orientation and beliefs are but you know what i mean do you do you think that people are coming back after they die in some form to communicate sometimes not, but I'm with. Don't I think ha- from what you were saying with some of the other previous guests that you've had, where I, I'm under the belief that I don't. It's not all dead people that we're dealing with, and that doesn't mean I'm talking about like some, you know, like the Greys, alien type, in you know, interdimensional being. But again, if we are in science, if we're going to subscribe to a lot of what you know theoretical physics is teaching you know, teach telling us rather, um, then we have to get, uh, we have to understand that um, these, these types of things are not, we have other universes, we have other dimensions. So for instance, um, if I were in a, you know, again, in a classroom situation and I'll stop and I'll say, and then you, because you know you're going to have everything from, which I have all in the same class. I've had an atheist, um, a Buddhist, and a a Christian. You've got very different mentalities going on, per belief systems. Yes, yes. Um, so it's a matter of, you know, well, well, Mary, but, it, you know, well, what about heaven? Well, you know, heaven's another dimension. 
if somebody dies and they subscribe, and this is where culture comes in, it's a very underrated aspect of the paranormal field. Yeah, yeah, I we've talked about that before, and and how how uh, how much an interpretation and a belief can affect a, a paranormal situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, because you're, it's the old thing. If you know, we're, we're, we know from what we, we know from what our interactions have been thus far that, you know, if, uh, you know, uncle Bob was a jokester in this life, he's going to be a jokester in the next, you know, when he dies. Well, more than that carries over your belief system. Um, so if you're going to act accordingly, if you were raised, let's say, for instance, in Vietnam, they believe, and you're not buried properly, or if you were from the Congo or something, um, and you're not buried properly, you're going to, in Congo, they're going to wander. You're going to be a wandering ghost forever. In Vietnam, you're going to be an angry ghost, and they're going to come back, you know, quite ticked off at the family or whoever. And, and so this is, a, this is almost well, a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way exactly. where you go, you know, if, if you believe it, that's where your soul is going. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're If you, what you believe, you're going to act according to how you believe, just like we do now. Right. In our, in as humans. So if we are now lack, we don't have this body, but we, ha- we carry a conscience, a consciousness with us over, that same beliefs, we probably, it seems that people, they act according to how they think they should act. It is, I suspect, and I, I mean, obviously we don't know this, nor will we ever because of the circumstance, but I suspect that many, not all, but many a- people who die atheists, it is lights out for them. That's such an interesting take on that. I, yeah. I, that, so... The like, so in other words, um, are you the, choosing to be a particle or are you choosing to be a wave? <laughs> there you go, yeah, <laughs> to bring it back around. Very nice, um, yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting that you know, most cultures have this way of saying, um, follow this path in life and you will reach XYZ in the afterlife, and um. Yeah, just this, all this create your own reality stuff that we've been talking about. It really, just that really all just fits in with that. That's like, you know, I, and we tend to be kind of um, not anti religious, but none of us are like conventionally religious whatsoever on the show. Yeah. We're all sort of just try, trying to figure stuff out still, you know? And, right. um, you know, so a lot of my life I've gone, uh, what are these people talking about? What are they, you know, what? Is, why do they think that you're going to need to? follow these rules and then you get whatever from some god or whoever it's like it makes a lot more sense that you're choosing your own reality by what you believe you know doesn't it well, in a yeah sense, we, it's what we do in this in this life right now and we our own reality yes i wish yeah. i could i wish i could <clears throat> wish i could harness that uh idea and, and use it a little bit more for my advantage i know yeah, that too. it goes like <laughs> with you on that. Po- positive th- to say right yeah yeah and and it's always like there's you know this idea of positive thinking and like right. uh you know re- uh, just affirming you know yourself with your, your speech and um the power and med- of even, words and intentions yeah words and intentions uh, meditation even and stuff and it all seems to it, we're like just as a species just starting to just grasp this idea that we can change our reality through believing but it's so hard to break out of this seemingly rock solid just place that we're in you know this this reality that we think we have and to be able to break out of that and really change things is something i think we're evolving towards i i I would say you know but um it's it's just a conscious awakening across the board is I think occurring but again I think a lot of that has to do with going back to the the millennium with a lot of the ghost shows when they started um, and people talking about things and not feeling ashamed of their experiences or thinking that somebody's going to think they're crazy and so on and so forth yeah that more and more of these topics are being discussed and there's still a lot of places you can go. Sorry to cut you off. There's still a lot of places you can go where where people will openly laugh at you for being for being interested in the parent. You know, there's still oh, yeah. a, a lot of segments of society that just haven't worked that into their 
uh, to their perception and their frame of reference at all. They're just, you know, still, I don't believe in ghosts, like, which is just such a, such a, you it's know, over. The oh. universes, I mean, you know, so again, some of the ghosts aren't always just dead people. Doesn't mean that they're alien in the sense of, and that I mentioned the greys because it's something that's foreign to us, you know, in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but they could just be, it's just us. But not necessarily in, in always copy universes in different dimensions and time. It's residual energy may be like residual ghosts, which is not an intelligent. It happens, it goes on whether you're there or not, just to witness it. You know, you're going to see, like you're mentioning something, you know, a lady comes down the stairs, walks up to the stove, grabs a pot, yes. and turns and fades away. Right. That's, you know, and it keeps playing like a loop. <coughs> And that's the well, stuff that's a little easier to understand for me where I go, you know, and I, I saw a long time ago uh, an analogy by I think one of the Penn State uh, paranormal guys uh, where he said, think of it like a, a an audio cassette tape. You've got a strip with a certain with a magnetic field. OK, and there's the, the, the tape is made of billions, literally of, of just microscopic particles, you know, just ti- the tiniest little magnetic particles and um not microscopic obviously but you know just (laughs) tiny so uh you take you know the idea the way you record onto a tape seems to be like the best direct analogy for residual uh hauntings or 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 specters or whatever is that like this thing just literally got recorded and and when the person has with the right vcr comes up it can be replayed you know um but or let me throw this at you, though. Okay. Because here's the alternative to that as another possibility. Um, X marks the spot or, or cross, but, you know, in that time dimension. And you have that specific point in time when you start getting into wormholes and, and, so, and things like that, where you're looking at, like, a, if you look through a keyhole into a room, or pinhole. Yes. You're only going to see that small thing. So we may be witnessing a open portal wormhole in a sense. Okay. And that we're only seeing, you know, September 3rd at 3:33 p.m. at 19:33 and that's all we're that's all it's open to. And we're going to see it play over and over and over. But there's an entire world going on around it. We're just not seeing it. We may actually be looking at, you know, 3.33 p.m. in 1933, and we're seeing that woman. Okay, so that's the other option is that, yeah, we're back to the horse track where the the dimensions and times are running parallel and there's some overlap at times. Um, and that you can peer in. It's a little, you know, pinhole window. Which do you uh, see that? How do you tend to think of it? I, I more towards the the what that okay I really do I'm um, not all I mean I guess it really depends on the, cer- the particulars of the case or circumstances so I mean that's maybe not even fair for me to say that but I, yeah, I, yeah. maybe a fifty fifty I'll I'll just say it that way it's a fifty fifty of sometimes it being a trapped energy um, imprinted. And other times, I really do think it is more of a portal on the, the means of it, you know, wormhole situation. In that we're just we we're just seeing a a window, you know, window in that specific point in time. Yes, in yes, yeah, I see. Um, yes, that's that's probably a little more sophisticated way of looking at it. I I would agree, I guess. Um, and uh. Since you mentioned a couple times, I'm such a like a UFO and alien uh, person, you know, and just a complete freak for that stuff. Do you get into that stuff at all? Um, and does that fit into your interdimensional uh, musings at all? It uh, it is something that I've been getting more into. Um, as I, I mean, my forte and, and how I started out was more ghosts and hauntings for years and years and years. Yeah, but as things went on, I needed to learn more in uh, those fields um, even down to and then when I was doing my own radio show when I was doing the paranormal MD radio show which hopefully will will come back on the air 
Um, yeah, we'll have to. We'll you'll have to keep in touch. Let us know if you're back on. We'll uh, we'll definitely yeah, listen. Yeah, but you know that kind of thing. Um, I was expanding, and I got you know when you talk to somebody like Stanton Friedman, uh, um, and if you're a UFO alien, you know. Uh, Stanton Friedman, he's a nuclear physicist. He's testified before congressional hearings oh, okay. on alien UFOs. Yeah, I didn't know the name right off offhand, but now I know who you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Brilliant. Right. Big man, you know, and you have him on the show, somebody like that on the show. And so those things keep making me research more just in the sense for the guests. Um, and so through the years, I've got more into that and even conspiracy. Um, I find it interesting and fascinating. I think an argument can be made either way for that, a lot of things. Um, however, just like the paranormal, there's always that there's that certain percentage that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, you don't have an explanation for. Yes, yeah. Um, and when you say conspiracy, do you mean like just a lot of the explanations for like geopolitical events that people would generally consider to be sort of crazy? Like, uh, you know, because... Conspiracy has become such a such a yeah, such a, a not, murky kind of word to you. You know, it's like do you right? What, it could be like a JFK thing, or it could be referring to you know Roswell sure. or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so what what are what do you mean? What kind of uh, conspiracy stuff have you gotten into? Well, just in like again, some of the UFO stuff, some of the UFO alien, because it really is a good combination at times because there is definitely cover-ups oh a anyone that looks into it whatsoever it doesn't take very long for you to realize they've slipped up enough times and and they've let enough stuff out to know like yeah, they're they're definitely doing a lot more investigating than they're than they're letting on and they have been since the, the 40s you know oh um, yeah absolutely it's pretty apparent um, and they weren't always very good at their cover-ups either there's some pretty hilarious <laughs> ones um roswell well, yeah. is, is the is the classic example of just a complete just a uh, free for all of uh, of people you know just offering up the wildest explanations back to back just no it was this oh it was this well no actually we recovered some uh, uh particle or i mean some uh some materials from a weather balloon and and you know but the day before they had said it was a ufo to the newspaper like yeah. the, the first <laughs> air force guy was just like yeah we got a ufo guys like he didn't know they weren't <laughs> supposed to tell anyone um. And it's not, you know, and it's a lot of times it's not, you know, like two guys sitting in a rowboat, you know, out in the middle of, uh, you know, of the lake going, you know, eating chiclets or something and they just see a UFO. We're right. talking sometimes town, an entire town of people. We covered a uh, hair airport over here by me. I'm, I'm by Chicago. I'm here a Chicago. Oh, yeah. We're right. We're right next. We're in uh, Willow Springs. So uh, just outside oh. of the city. Yeah, I didn't yeah, realize well, I'm you in were, a suburb, but yeah, I okay. mean, we had. An, I think it was oh, was that oh? Maybe it wasn't as long as oh five. I think I'm making up the year. Uh, there was a mass long. sighting at O'Hare. Yeah, it was somewhere around there. I would put it between two thousand two and and two thousand five somewhere. Two thousand six. Um, two thousand six. Right. Okay. November seventh, two thousand six. Yes, and there were pilots. There were police. Every walk of there life was, saw that. Yeah, there was passengers, people. In you know, the middle of the day. Yes. Um, and the, they never had an explanation. They just no, and they don't all left it under the rug. And that's they, you know we we've co we've come to just expect that from our our you know it's, uh, higher levels of government to just go. Well, we'll let you know when we decide to tell you something. You know, <laughs> we'll we'll, right. we'll inform you when we're ready. Um, but you know, it it's uh I, sorry we I was just gonna mention uh, since we've been doing the show we've been doing this for about a year. I would say we've come across. Uh, what do you think, Andrea? Eight or ten mass UFO sightings that just made our jaws drop just and, yeah. and made you go, how come everyone, why is everyone still going to work and doing, like everyone yeah. should have dropped <laughs> everything they're doing the second that this happened and we should all be trying to figure out what this was. This yeah. should be all anyone's talking about, you know, um, <laughs> but it's like, like, it just goes away, you know, people go, well, that was weird. There and, was uh, just that one in May of the giant in San Diego, clear craft. In, yeah. I think it was San Diego, right? Yes. That, that was seen by like 500 people and it was just a giant black craft with red blinking lights it was like it was something insane. out of a movie it was just completely nuts and uh the, the local uh military and, and, and whoever's around their air force and stuff just no comment we don't have any we don't know you know though, i think a lot i mean if you really looked at it probably 90 percent of the ufos are not 
they're unidentifiable to us. Right. But they're they're somebody's. They're ours. They're they're you know another military, another country. They're crafts that we don't even know about. And I'll say crafts. They, NASA is sending up. Um, I can't think of the name of it. It's on July third of this year. It's going to be the second attempt with because of some weather balloon issue they had or or uh, a shoot issue with it. This thing is ginormous and it looks like a UFO. It looks like your traditional round disc, but with like windows and decks on it. You know, like a de- God. Would I love to ride in one of those? Now, <laughs> that would be fun. NASA. How long? Was this thing, how many years has this been being tested before we're now seeing it? So how many times did people see uh, this I'll tell along you, with other things? 58 years. They've been reverse, uh, right, reverse you know? engineering that the UFO that crashed in Roswell ever since then. Um, you know, that is, that is, there's a lot of evidence of that too. A lot. There's been so many guys that have... On done deathbed confessions that go look yeah we've got a ufo we're working on the technology and it's no secret that um at certain levels in government technology is at a point that we won't see as consumers for 40 years you know right. um so and I, I don't think that's really up for debate anymore i think we all but, pretty much agree on that right. but the uh oh sorry the only other thing i was gonna percentage that are real Meaning that yeah, you yeah. don't belong to anybody and don't have any explanation. And and to that point, but, I was going to say, don't you think it's really unlikely that any of them are actually extraterrestrial? Because this is going back to the interdimensional thing. For many years, I've thought that just because of the distance and, and involved with uh, <clears throat> space travel to any other uh, possibly inhabitable planet is just so vast uh, that it would be more likely that these we these would also be some interdimensional occurrence. Um. Yes, I guess I'm. Mean, I guess what I'm trying to. Well, kissy, how, oh gosh, this gets so heavy into the things. Yeah. Um. I think that here's what I think. I think that ninety percent of you. And this is how I will. I'll leave this at it. Ninety percent okay. of the UFOs out there are explainable. Sure. They're not meaning that they're legitimately belonging to us or somebody else. I think there's maybe you know ten percent that, um, in fact do our alien crafts now or universal i mean there's even you can even look at a perspective of people talk about the the things that look like grays those types of aliens yeah I, that could be us three five thousand years in the future mm-hmm. yeah no that's yeah that's definitely one that gets thrown around um the other one that's really fascinating is that they could be creatures from inside the earth uh, you know, and no. that, See, I don't buy that. There's been a well, but there's been. It's <laughs> That's where she draws the line. Yeah, it's a, but it's <laughs> it a, it's a uh, it's a fun theory though, and there's been a lot of footage caught of UFOs emerging from like lakes and oceans and what, and they like. There's a whole USO allegedly. phenomenon allegedly. Um, have you ever looked into the Hollow Earth? Um. No. No. Should I? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. weird. It, you know, it's it's someone like you might be able to look at it and immediately go, "Well, here's why this is bullshit." You know, we get this is a totally totally debunked. You know, but for me, it's been really fun. Um, it's one of those things that's backed up by a ton of just like cultural legends and and this and that. You know, it's one of those things that that almost every ancient culture has this story of different beings that came out from the out of the earth or tribes that ventured into the earth and never came back there's stories in in modern culture too there's like uh you know air force and and whoever people that say they have flown into the uh, hollow earth it's pretty fascinating it's basically the idea that uh the earth instead of having um just a, a giant sea of magma um that and a core that there's actually an inner star that the Earth is sort of more like a well, like an atom, I guess, um, and with an inner like nucleus, you know, um, is that what I'm thinking of, or yeah. am I thinking of a molecule? Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, the idea that there's like an inner star and that gravity is working more like on a space station where it like you could stick to both sides of the Earth's crust. So if you're standing on the inside, you know, gravity is working the opposite way. So there's an entire hollow, concave, whatever 
Earth in there, you know. But according to our Earth, I mean, with what we do know, Earth science wise, and what we can look at, I don't see how you could. They could come up with that because we know what's in there. Yeah, that's they'll they'll say that we don't. Um, <laughs> there's there's plenty of people that will say that well, we. Well, I've never seen the core of the Earth. But anyways, that's where <laughs> that's where Mary Marshall draws the line yeah. is uh, is the Hollow Earth. Um, but no, that's and, fine. It is it is. I got into it specifically because I sat down one day and I just started thinking about. I'm going, man. Over my life, as I go into each new era, it's so. It's so profound how much, uh, how many things turned out to be a lie. How many things I grew up thinking <laughs> right? that I had to research my way out of. So I just sat down one day and I just thought, what is something that I think is just completely insane and probably has no merit? And I thought, ah, oh, hollow earth theory. And, and uh, wouldn't you know it, I spent two hours on YouTube and now I'm convinced, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, that is absolutely <laughs> what's going on. And that's on. the problem for yeah. all of us. There's so much... It's so easy to make an argument for things. You know, when you look at a lot of the, whether it be books or YouTube or television shows, um, we're not always getting all sides to something. And you can make something pretty compelling, you know, uh, an argument for something pretty compelling according to it. But then certain pieces of information are left out. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, as as is so common with stuff like ancient aliens and whatever, you know, yeah. they'll put together a really convenient thing using an out of date interpretation and, and, and a and a no, you know, a, a translation that's been proven wrong twenty five years ago and stuff. And yeah, and then presented as fact. And, and then when you're watching it, you're like, holy shit, this is well, I can't believe this. Why don't you more know? people know about this? Yes, this is we. <laughs> the Anunnaki's were definitely in Sumeria. There's no disputing it. Um, <laughs> This should be bigger news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, it is It is amazing how easily tricked we are. It really, it really is. I bet you if we took and, and started looking at a lot of the um, um, hieroglyphics or cave drawings and all the different, you know, things over time and where we a lot of the ancient uh, alien theories, you know, theories, you know are that that some of the ones that they worshipped as gods were aliens and so forth and whatnot. I bet you, and then you look at symbols, and well, it, look at it, it looks like a spaceship. It's all and it, it's the all next it could person be. person uses the same drawing and says, look at it. It looks just, you know, I think we should start going on like the Snickers theory, and I bet we could find drawings that look like people are holding Snickers bars in their hands. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you could and say, yeah. make an argument for it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. But Snickers has really been around for four thousand yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> what else could those be? They're clearly Snickers bars. Um, <laughs> exactly. And that stupid guy it's, with the huge hair. Yeah. Like, there's no other Snickers. explanation. It's Snickers, a hundred percent fact. <laughs> um, it's a mound. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you feel that. So, um, what what exactly do you teach? Uh, and I, I want to go through everything that she needs. And what are we promoting too? We're doing the uh, you're doing you're speaking oh. at Silcon, right? Yes, that's. Uh, um, I don't know. Like, are we? How much time we have left here? Ah, uh, whatever. We're just we're flexible. You know, we're yeah. We're <laughs> we're flexible. It doesn't matter. So, um, so a couple, a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are. Uh, I am going to be speaking at the Central Illinois. Illinois um, Con, it is a, they're doing an awesome kind of cool thing there because it's not your typical paranormal conference. Right, yeah. Um, it's got being gaming, gaming there, uh, um, horror, yeah, anime, and anime, yeah. wrestlers, and, you know, I kept joking about that. I'm like, does that mean I could dress up? Oh yeah, yeah. you'll be. Well, I'll you'll be wearing a costume. You'll fit right in. We're gonna be there. Yeah. We're, we've we've got some ideas. Well, honest, oh, that'd be nice to meet you in person then. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna get to meet a bunch of our guests. Yeah. And um, a few other people that we've made fun of. Yeah. So <laughs> that'll be. And we just realized. We also just realized. We just realized too. There's like a couple of of people that we've kind of made fun of a lot on the show, like local kind of hacky investigators, and. Uh, Whoops. And well, then we realize we're going to be at this convention, and the whole thing, I guarantee you, is in one room. We're just going to be staring at each other all day, yeah. you know, just <laughs> trying to avoid eye contact, you know. Um, but anyways, it is going to be a really fun, uh, a really fun uh, event. And uh, what did you? You didn't say what is your uh, 
what is your presentation going to be on? It is going to be on uh, entanglement, the undisclosed truth. And it's um, basically kind of touching on a little bit of some of the things that we talked about um, here on the show tonight. And then uh, just elaborating on that and, and kind of tying it in. Because I think one of the things I think that um, bothers me about the ghost haunting side of of the paranormal field is um, when you look at somebody like MUFON for, you know, when they're dealing with UFOs, they're much, much more organized than we are. They're much more, um, the information is accessible from one party to the other. There are protocols that all have to follow investigators, specific things that they have to do uh, when investigating and documenting. Now, I'm not proposing that the par- that the uh, ghost side has to do everything the same because we know in science it does. You know, we yeah. want people to try different approaches. But we have noticed that that difference in those networks for sure. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. huge, and and um, it's been serious. And it's also been very a division, meaning you've got your like you know UF UFO alien crowd, you've got the ghosts and this, you know, uh, haunting, and then you've got the cryptids, you know, cryptozoologists. Sure. I always joke about it and say, you know, like the the um, ghost, the ghost people want, uh, you know, uh, nothing to do with the, um, you know, crypt, uh, alien, you know, if especially if it's like alien abduction or something. Then you've got the UFO alien who want nothing to do with the cryptozoologist, and then you want the cryptozoologist who wants nothing to do with, uh, you know, uh, psychic mediums. You want, And then you've got the psychic mediums who are the only ones who, pr- for the most part, will deal with them all, and then you have yeah. the scientists <laughs> who want nothing to do with any of it. With anything, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just so, all so you idiots get out of here. So if we could kind of unite yeah. with those different little ones in there, it would give us a whole lot more power and more voice and yes probably definitely be further along yeah well, we've talked a lot before like why is there not a move on for paranormal sightings right what the, why it, that seems like such an obvious thing that should be going on already and i'm sure there are some small attempts at it there's probably some sites out there but there's yeah there has not been any uh sort of unified uh uh what was that noise i don't know what that was all right it, i thought she hung up i'm sorry uh i was oh. uh there was, there's <laughs> I, I heard like the skype hang up noise like oh no what happened uh but yeah, there's no, there's no sort of, with you. Yeah, this, <laughs> this guy's rambling out of here. Um, but no, there's, there's no sort of unified effort made to, to, yeah, to like, to sort of start building a, a database for, for the paranormal like there has with the UFO at all. Um, yeah, it, there's a lot of resistance. Uh, it's interesting because I had brought it up like in started topics in like I think 2010. I was then around there or something. I was doing a blog and I wrote this. Holy shnikes did people get on there's you know soapboxes and up in arms and everything else. What was that, what was people's problems with it? Um, you know what I a lot of them are like well they uh, they don't want to be told what to do. Personally, I think this is... Like they don't want to have a protocol for how to document events or something? Uh, pro- probably. And it, although it's the field's changed, though, too. It's like when I started, 90% of, ever, of the cases that I did were all home, were all private, home and business. Now, everything's paid public investigations for the most part, not all, but you know, more, much, much more, you know, eighty percent of what you're doing is that type of thing. Yeah, we've well, heard if you're that, doing yeah. it for yourself, do whatever you want. But I would say when you go into somebody's home, you are de- you are dealing with somebody's life. I've t- been in cases where there was a case that we went into, and I use this a lot as a go-to because it just makes the point. Um, but we did a, I did a home investigation case. This is. A few several few years back, and it was a family, a husband and wife, and two adolescent age children. When we went in there, by the time we got in there to investigate, none of them had been sleeping in their bedroom for three months. They had all been sleeping together in the family room for Jesus. three months. Whoa! Because of the activity going on. That's now, insane. Can you imagine that? Would, would you sleep with your whole family? And like, yeah, that takes pretty drastic circumstances. You know? That like gives me um, a little pit in my chest about what that must feel like. Oh man, they yeah. must have been terrified. And so, can you imagine? You now are learning 
80% of what you know is from television and a little bit around. And you really, and I'm not, and I'll, you might think you have a grip on it and you might have a very good one, but you're going to go into somebody's home and what if you don't know what you're doing? And there's so many cases of what we, a lot of people refer to in the industry as cleanups. Because somebody who didn't know what they were doing went in and did and made things worse, or they're just so unprofessional that you know here you've got a frightened family, um, and they they you let this team in and then you, they never hear from them again, or they just get a well we think it's this. There's no report. Um, if I do a case on a home case. And there's things that are found that could be anywhere, you know, from 25 to 40 pages long. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. You know, yeah. and the people aren't. And so I feel that a lot of the people who don't want this organization are concerned that they're going to be booted to the curbside because they're not going to, you know, be good enough or know or have the right, th- whatever, ah, yes. that this might. But. If we get a governing body that sort of like our country, not the greatest, we all know all the problems with it, but it's it's still, regardless of how we feel, one of the better systems out there government-wise. So if you take this down to we have a body, a governing body that we elect and can oust out at any time just to set up certain, just to more like Buffon, certain criteria. I think that if investigators are going into the home, that they have to have a higher standard of education than if they're doing things for themselves. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Problem is, is trying to get that education out the right way. And that's partly what you're, part of what you're doing, right? Yes, except it's not credited. It's not credited. Really? Is that and right? here's the problem with it, is because, again... Starting right at the beginning, determining what is needed to not only satisfy what you need to know if you're going to be working in the field, but also to satisfy the college. Let's say it's a college. Um, there's academic standards. How how do the other um, you know how do the people at, at, at the colleges where you work look at you as I mean do they do they think that that what you're doing is kind of wacky and 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 out in left field or or are they generally interested in it or you get like uh the same level of respect that a that a a stuffy you know old phys- a physics professor gets or or how how do they treat you well the physics again department will have nothing to do with it okay um that's pr- and i always find this that ironic in general because you have a lot of people, they're, they're teaching physics and they're like, well, even if they, they may have their own personal opinion on it and that they're, they're all, in a sense that they're okay with it, they will never cross over because the, it is literally said, but if I do this, then what I'm, do, I'm doing here is not going to be taken seriously. I'm not going to be taken seriously and the work I'm doing is not going to be taken seriously if I mess around with all this goofy, you know, pair theoretical paranormal stuff oh you mean like the theoretical physics you teach theoretical yeah exactly yeah. you know and so he'll spend but, all day reading about that higgs boson character uh <laughs> that we talked about but yeah but 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 any of this stuff is no good and it's kind of a shame because if probably they gave you a chance they would see that a lot of what you talk about and um and 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 what you believe is is rooted in physics right yeah, and we need them. That's yeah, the thing. Okay. As I look at it, most of what investigators do, we like to think that as the layman investigator researcher that we're doing something uh, with some sort of scientific you know, ba- basis to it. And recently some there was an exchange that was actually on Facebook, and it's, uh, I, which I absolutely agree with, um, this person, which was, what we do is not sci- considered scientific evidence. It is actually, and it is discounted by the scientific community. However, it is uh, something that within the field that we, other investigators and other people within the paranormal field, look at to help 
educate we educate each other and to further the field along um but as much documentation as we're going to do it is not going to be taken it is not scientific we need the scientists to get involved and so the more or my opinion in on, on this and going kind of going back to the organization of things the more organized we get um, the more standards that we put into place the more we can attract the attention of the people we need and we ah, do need yeah. a whole I, a whole we're we're just field researchers sure we are not scientists right okay yeah, that's an excellent point, really, um, and uh, that probably is the, the necessary. It's it's the necessary way to go to to expand this field. I would think it um, is, and yeah. money because we're everybody's doing things out of their pocket. I know people who spend thousands that's and thousands. Almost every guest we've had has you know yeah has bought all their they it's yeah it's basically people don't do this for any other reason than they feel it's their calling you know um, right and uh, you get, and you so get scientists involved. You get one grant, yeah. fifty thousand. There you go. Yeah, and they, the most of them are—they're not making any money. They have, uh, you know, a few of our guests have a tiny office somewhere, but most of them work out of the house. You know, mm-hmm. it's yeah, it is very, uh, very kind of a rogue field still. Um, yeah, and all of our, even if you went back to the basis of medicine, look at all the what we would consider like barbaric. Mm-hmm. hacking approaches initially to tr- but what they were trying to do is they were doing the best that they had with the tools that they had at the time and they were trying to learn yeah yeah so you know by doing things that seemed at the time maybe um i don't want to say unethical because that wasn't really the case but just maybe a little bizarre um those yielded results that turned into you know our medical field and you know, and so on and so forth. That when they started, people prob- looked at them much the same way, and thinking, "What? You know, like what are you talking about?" Right? Yeah, you yeah. Know? You it's sort of like going back to something completely different that we always use as the go-to. What do you mean the world's not flat? You yeah, know, yeah. Get out of I here. mean, there's hundreds of examples <laughs> of, of you know advancements in in science that people resisted. You know, there's yeah, yeah it's denied. It's, that's part of human nature, I guess, too. And like what we were talking about before, uh, trying maybe what we're evolving towards towards uh, uh, getting out of that of that construct. You know, that so many people are stuck in of of just you know, hey, reality is is as I know it, and uh, and I'm not changing my and, mind, right? And 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 anything that challenges that is uh, is is hogwash <laughs> um <laughs> and boy do people really subscribe to that because i do i am a believer that people are going to believe what they want to believe oh pl- yes yeah and maybe Preach that it. goes back That's a big to theme we all create here. our own reality yeah <laughs> and to bring it around full circle uh that's got to be our our way of wrapping it up because we uh we got to get out of here um <laughs> Can I give the dates? No, oh, we're yeah. gonna. No, 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 no. That won't be necessary. Check this out. Ready? I'm ready. Mary Marshall will be speaking at Silicon, which is taking place in <laughs> Mattoon, Illinois, August 21st and 22nd. Is that it? I bet. I and, uh, love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, you can uh, take some, t- get out and take some classes if you're in the Chicago area. Uh, where are you at? Harper and COD. Yeah, and, uh, Harper College and Palatine uh, College of DuPage and Lake County College. This and next month in Highland Park, I am going to be teaching a three-week class at the Infinity Foundation, Ghost and Spirit Entities. Cool. Hey, maybe awesome. we can we should get out and take a class. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, we might be we might be sitting in your classroom soon. This was <laughs> this was a lot of fun to talk to you. Uh, certainly, uh, certainly very interesting and. Uh, and you 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 definitely have a uh, a talent for for talk, and I hope you get uh, back. I, I hope you get back on the radio. We I'd, I'd listen to your show anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you guys are awesome, and I think and I just want a recording of 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 uh, 
<laughs> that background music and you're doing the voiceovers. I don't care. You could say anything. It just makes me smile. <laughs> yeah, we'll send, we'll just send you a compilation of just yeah of all of our intros. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, all right. Well, yeah. Re- regrettably, we got to get out of here because it it has been uh, great to talk to you and and hopefully we can do this again. Um, you know, sometime when we have uh, we have some some interesting things to ask you about, we'll we'll try to get you on again. Oh, you guys are great. Well, thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you again thank you. for being here. It, was it? Do we miss anything, or do we? Do you want to plug anything else, or are we good? I, I think I'm good. All right, all right, good. <laughs> all right, then we're out of here. Uh, Mary Marshall, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. And there she goes, there hanging she up the old goes. phone. Um. Yeah, wow, just a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh clearly a uh a very profound and intelligent individual there. Well, and I love what she's doing because I've always struggled with a lot of conflicting ideas about paranormal versus science. And yeah. I, I love the way she's able to connect it. It's, you can tell she's she's really full to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's really thought through all yeah. of this very thoroughly and she really has a good handle on exactly uh